For years, we had four direct contact heat pipes for CPU cooling. Then Vetro shook things up with five for some of the best budget cooling of this year. And now Ego comes along with six direct contact heat pipes for the ultimate in CPU cooling. But is it though? Does more heat pipes equal more cooling? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and today we'll be taking a look at a brand new low budget CPU cooler. This is the Ego P6, and as the name implies, the feature it brings to the table is the use of six direct contact heat pipes. Now we've seen coolers with three and four direct contact heat pipes for years now. The most popular probably being the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, this is the black edition. I have the original and V2 around here too. I've used these coolers over the years for multiple PC builds because for the money, they perform very well. Now, earlier this year, Vetro released the V5, which features five direct contact heat pipes. I reviewed this cooler. Many much bigger reviewers reviewed this cooler. And the consensus has been that this is probably one of the best CPU coolers for the money, matching or even outperforming much more expensive coolers. So logically, six heat pipes should theoretically be better, but I'm not gonna bury the lead here. It's not. I tested it on my Ryzen 7 3700X test bench, and while it is an improvement over the stock AMD cooler, it falls behind the Cooler Master and the Vitro. Let's just put the charts up. All temperatures listed are delta T Celsius or degrees above ambient measured in Celsius. Beginning with idle temps, the V5 was able to keep the CPU about 29% cooler on average than the P6, while the Hyper 212 held average temps about 15% lower. And the Ego also falls behind the stock Wraith cooler. Under full load, the results tighten up with the Vetro just 7.5% and the Cooler Master just 6.3% cooler than the Ego. And while the Ego can hold peak temps significantly below the Wraith Spire, average temps are only about 7.5% under the stock cooler, which is about half of what the Vetro can do. With the stock fans set to their maximum RPM for the duration of the test, the faster Vetro and Cooler Master fans do cut temps by an extra two to three degrees, while the 1600 RPM Ego fan was already at about its limit and only gained an extra 0.4 Celsius. Now, in our fan normalized test, the Noctua NFP12 Redux locked at 1700 RPM, the Ego P6 was able to reduce the CPU temp by another 1.4 degrees. However, it still fell 8% behind the Vetro and 6.5% behind the Hyper 212. Looking at noise levels at idle, the Ego P6 is virtually silent, while just slightly quieter than the Vetro at load. And surprisingly, the old Hyper 212 is quieter than both at load, while the stock cooler is, well, just obnoxious. Hey, just jumping in during the editing process for a quick disclaimer. This Ego P6 cooler was sent to me from the factory in China prior to it being released for sale. So it's technically a pre-retail sample. And I had questions about the numbers that you just saw. I gave my contact at Ego a heads up and they were concerned too. So to be fair and ensure there wasn't some problem with the cooler I literally got from a slow boat from China, I got on Amazon and ordered another Ego P6. It arrived today. It's the same one any of you watching would get if you ordered it online. I spent the better part of the day testing it, and in the end, it performed exactly the same as the first one, down to the fractions of a degree in every test. So the review stands as it is now with confirmation. Now, I do have to give Ego credit here. After sharing my results with them, something I've never done before, and telling them my plan to retest a retail sample, they were understandably concerned, but they never in the slightest tried to convince me to not publish the review. In fact, they were very clear that they supported me putting out the truthful information and sincerely thanked me for testing their product. 
I gotta say, not a lot of companies would be so um, hospitable. Of course, they don't know what I ended up doing with the first cooler. You'll see what I mean in a few. So it would seem that more heat pipes doesn't necessarily mean better with the Ego P6 performing, well, worse than every test. But why is that? Well, let's just look at some of the obvious comparisons between the three coolers, starting with the Cooler Master, which basically just brute forces the cooling with more radiator surface area of 55 fins as opposed to 44 fins, which are also about one or two millimeters deeper than the Ego. And the use of a 2000 RPM fan as opposed to the 1600 RPM Ego fan. So despite just four heat pipes, those four heat pipes are working more efficiently by being able to cycle heat faster. Now the Vetro cooler just comes down to pure efficiency. The five heat pipes, three have two 45 degree bends while two have one 90 degree bend. The Ego P6 on the other hand has several of the pipes with multiple bends S curve bends and well the middle pipe in here has almost a 180 degree curve in it. Each bend in the heat pipe reduces its efficiency or Q factor and any bend over 90 degrees significantly reduces it. As far as the radiator the V5 is slightly shorter while still having three more fins and this simple but brilliant cutout. Now, despite what you may have heard from other reviewers or even, well, Vetro themselves, this has nothing to do with any RAM or motherboard clearance. It doesn't even line up with anything. This section of the fins is closest to the heat source, so the first to absorb that heat, but it's also blocked by the corner of the fan. So it gets no airflow. So Vitro just cut it out, forcing the heat transfer up into the part of the rad that gets the airflow. Again, simple, but efficient. And finally, the Vetro has a better fan producing 3.6 millimeters HTO of static pressure at only 1700 RPM. And static pressure is key when it comes to cooling efficiency. Now, there could also be other issues with the cooler and the heat pipes themselves, less efficient sintering or wicking ability of the wicking material itself, or possibly some of the material was damaged by the extreme bends in the pipe an incomplete vacuum in the tube, even poor bonding of the fins to the heat pipes. These are things I can't check without cutting this thing open, but are typical points of inefficiency in a cooler. And unfortunately, this cooler just doesn't seem to be as efficient as it seems like it could be on paper. Now, I've already gone off script of my typical cooler review. I skipped the stats and measurements, the installation process, because I look at my YouTube engagement stats and y'all typically skip that too. So I decided to just see if I can improve the performance of this cooler. Now I can't fix whatever may be wrong with the heat pipes, but I can try to improve the efficiency. So I'm gonna um, vetrofy it. The Vetro cooler uses this cutout to direct the heat transfer into the area of the radiator that gets the airflow or forced convection. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this radiator. Cut away the fins that are covered by the fan and see if I can improve the efficiency and performance of the cooler at all. It seems counterintuitive to get better cooling by removing surface area, but let's just hack some shit off and see if it works. All right, so it looks like I gotta take off the corner of the bottom 11. I'm using a small precision tin snips for this and I'll probably polish the jagged edges with my Dremel when I'm done so I don't end up opening an artery when I'm installing this. The tin snips didn't really work. In the end, I just scored the fins with my Dremel and snapped them off, then cleaned up the edges. Now, I guess it's just time to mount this on the test bench and see if this improves performance at all. I don't have huge expectations, but I guess we'll see. Okay, so this is the only the first run and I'm actually oh, almost two minutes over the 10 minute run mark, but 
just on the first run, my average temperature after 12 minutes is only 74.4 with a maximum of 82. So the maximum is the same. So on my unmodified runs, I had max temps of 81, 82, 81, but the average temps over the 10 minutes was 79.5, 79.1, 79.1. Here, I'm only at 74.6. So it looks like, and I have to do these runs two more times and get the average. And if this number's way off, of course, it'll get thrown out and I'll do three other runs. But it looks like I've shaved by literally shaved almost five degrees off of the average temperatures of this cooler just by cutting off some of the ends of the fins. I don't know. We'll see what happens when I get all three runs in. Okay, so that initial run was in fact a bit of a fluke. Well, not a fluke, just, well, me being dumb or forgetful. The test runs for 20 minutes, not 10. So the temps did creep up some more. I did do the full benchmark, three 20 minute runs, then uninstalling and reinstalling the cooler three times in between for a total of nine runs, but if I put up the chart, in the end, you can see that the hack did knock 2.6 degrees off the average load temp, bringing the Ego within a single degree of the Hyper 212 and closing the gap with the Vetro to 1.7 degrees. However, notice that the max peak temp remained the same. Now, I'm not advising you to go and start hacking up your CPU coolers. Yes, it did lower the average temperature during the 20 minute stress test runs. However, the CPU did eventually hit the same 59 degrees above ambient. It just took a bit longer to get there. Besides, if you nick a heat pipe, say bye bye to your cooler. So pros and cons of the Ego P6, and today I'll start with the pros. First, it does come with a good fan, the 2.2 millimeters H2O static pressure at just 1600 RPM is really nothing to complain about, and it's quiet. It's not the quietest 120 millimeter cooler I've tested, but noticeably quieter than most. It has a clean aesthetic with a unique implementation of RGP if you're into that. Another slightly less relevant point is that the AR12 Pro fans are also sold separately in sets of five, three, and one for a good price. So if you wanted to match your case fans, there is that option. The mounting system is simple and secure, good mounting pressure, but probably not completely uniform due to, well, a few factors, but it's good for its price point. Finally, the price. The P6 is currently priced at $39.99, but includes a $10 coupon, bringing it to $29.99, which is the same price as the Vetro and about $10 cheaper than the Hyper 212 Black Edition. As long as the coupon doesn't go away, that's a fair price point. The cons is basically the performance. Now, the performance isn't horrible, but it still falls short of the two comparable coolers I tested against, and even the cheaper Deep Cool Game Max 400 V2 and the OG Hyper 212 Evo I have beat the Vetro performance wise, which beat this. Also, the fact that Ego claims 150 watt TDB cooling potential is probably stretching it. It's not just Ego, all these coolers exaggerate their TDB potential. Now, I don't test any of these budget coolers on overclocked CPUs like I do for AIOs or more expensive, more robust air coolers because, well, they just fail the benchmark. The 3700X at 90 watts, the cooler hit 82 degrees, just 13 degrees from TJ Maxx, and that's in a relatively cool 22 degree room, so I'd say 90 watts is the reasonable top end for this. And any lower budget single tower 120 millimeter cooler. If you wanna overclock your CPU or you're running a 120 through 150 watt or more CPU, you need to spend more than 30 or 40 bucks on a cooler. I mean, that's just tough love right there, man. And just coming off of victory in the 240 millimeter AIO review I did just a few weeks ago, it's a tough loss for Ego. 
But if you're in the market for a new CPU cooler, there are links to these and all the coolers I've reviewed in the description below, as well to links to those review videos. If you have any questions, don't be shy, ask in the comments below, and be sure to hit that like while you're down there. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.